What's going on guys? My name is Chris and welcome to Cross Chop. Today we're going to take a look at my collection of official Nintendo GameCube controllers. Behold! This is my entire official Nintendo GameCube controller collection as of April 2015. It's not too large obviously, but I figured this might be a good way to kind of benchmark my controller collection for what is hands down my favorite disc-based Nintendo system. The GameCube controller's design is my favorite of any Nintendo has made to date, and is possibly my favorite controller for any game system, period. It's got a great weight, the buttons are responsive and sensibly placed, and most of all, the thing is easy to grip comfortably for long play sessions. It's clear that the GameCube controller is a popular one and has maintained its status as a fan favorite, given that Nintendo is still manufacturing some of the special edition ones, mainly for use with Super Smash Bros. on the Wii U to this day. At this point, I have 8 of the 25 official Nintendo GameCube controllers released worldwide, which comes out to 32% of the total varieties available. I don't have any plans to complete the collection of all 25, as many of the ones I'm missing are pretty expensive, really rare, or both, but if I do happen to add some here and there as time goes on, I'm certainly not going to complain, and not, then I'll be able to do an updated video documenting the new additions. Anyway, I want to keep this video pretty brief, so let's take a quick look at each of the ones I have so far, and I'll note any unique characteristics about them that I can. First up, we've got the Indigo controller, which was released as a launch controller with the accompanying Indigo GameCube console itself back in 2001. It was released in Japan, the United States, and in Europe, and it's purple on the top and the bottom. This is the most iconic of the GameCube controllers, and certainly the most common. You're going to run into this one a lot. Up next is the Jet Black GameCube controller. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It's black all over. It was released at the same time as the Indigo one, and it's pretty cool. This one kind of became the go-to option for people who didn't really want to be seen with a purple or orange controller, which leads me into the Spice Orange controller, which also was released in Japan, the United States, and in Europe as a launch color scheme. It could be bought standalone in all of those regions or was actually bundled with a GameCube console uh, in Japan that was also orange. And this one's pretty cool. For a long time, it was my favorite and I still really, really enjoy playing with this one. This next one is just a little bit more on the obscure side, though still not terribly uncommon and definitely not rare, and that's the Indigo Clear Split controller, also available in Japan, the United States, and in Europe. It was released a little bit after the GameCube's initial launch, and it can only really be bought separately at retail. It wasn't bundled with a console at any point. Plowing right ahead, we'll take a look at the two Wavebird controllers I've got. I've got the Wavebird Gray, which was in Japan, the United States, and Europe, as well as the Wavebird Platinum. And these two are pretty much identical, just a different sheen on them and they're very comfortable. I use the Wavebird Platinum quite a bit. I recently played through The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes using that. There's no rumble feature in there, but the wireless functionality is great. The ergonomical design is just as comfortable as ever, and they're really great controllers. They were kind of front runners in the wireless controller area. This next one is the first import that I've actually bought as far as really any gaming hardware goes, and that's the Super Smash Bros. Edition White GameCube controller, which is exclusive to Japan. I actually imported this. I have an unboxing video of it, which I'll link below if you want to see my initial reactions when I open that up, but it's really incredible. It's, it's again, the same design as always, but the, the grip feels a little bit more textured. The buttons are uh, just as snappy as you could ever want them to be, and the analog sticks are great too. It was uh, really kind of something of a thrill to be able to buy a brand new uh, GameCube controller in 2015 and open it up, take it out of the box. Pretty exciting. Last but definitely not least is the most recent GameCube controller acquisition I've gotten. And again, it's an import, and it's the Emerald Blue Japan-only GameCube controller, uh, first released back in December of 2002 in Japan. Uh, originally, it was something that you could buy as a standalone at retail, or actually as part of a console bundle for the Pikmin 2 Special Edition starter set but I really love this color. It's, it's kind of a robin's egg blue almost, 
not really so much <laughs> on the the emerald green side but definitely a really nice one and the condition of this one is great I actually got a great deal on eBay for it normally they sell for uh, from what I've seen 55 to even upwards of $70 I got this one for 30 with $10 shipping and uh, I was willing to pay that for this one I really liked this color design well guys that wraps up this video about these GameCube controllers and I really hope you enjoyed it if you like this video let me know in the comments below which one of these controllers was your favorite and if you've never been here before and would like to see more videos like this in the future please subscribe thanks so much for hanging out at Cross Chop today and play heavy